Shalom, everybody. Halalahaya Bahasham Yashaya Waharawak Kwadash Aman. I affirm <clears throat> this is true and faithful. This is part four to order in the house. Now in this in this um video, pardon me, we're gonna be um going into a few things about um a righteous and honorable man now, now that we know about men and women. So now we need the men to get in order um, for, for the women to be able to follow our lead. So we're going to go to, hold on one second. All praise to the Most High. Hope you guys are having a great day. James chapter 1 verse 19 through 21. Remember everything got to be edifying. Understand this my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear. A ready le learner, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and to get angry. Slow to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God. Alright. So let's go, on, go ahead and continue. Hold on one sec. So it says right here. This is in <clears throat> the first book of John, chapter 2, verse 22. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Yeshaya Hamashiach is the Christ? This is the Antichrist. Don't get with no Antichrist, please. The one who denies the Father and the Son. Allah, the Quran. Ev in the, okay, everyone who rejects the Son doesn't have the Father either. The person who acknowledges the Son, which is the crown of man, also have the Father. So in the first book of John, chapter 2, verse 23. Or in the first book of John, chapter 4, verse 15. If any man acknowledges that Yeshaya is the son of Abba Alahaya, Abba Alahaya lives in him, and he in Abba Alahaya. Aman. So live in the Most High by keeping his, his truth and his laws and his commandments. So now we're going to go into what is... A righteous man. Cry out loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Remember that. Because it's good to know what's a righteous man. Hold on one second. Y'all all, all praise to the Most High Yahya. Bahasham, Yeshua. Okay, here we go. This is for you men, the order of the house of Christ. Traits of a righteous man, Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous truth light. The light truth, the truth light, the light. The marvelous light. Portrait of the man of integrity. Proverbs chapter 32. Might be verse 32 as well. Who can find a man of integrity? Where's the man that has integrity? The just man walketh in his integrity. The just man, the one that's fear and merciful and gracious and compassionate, walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after them, after him. So your children pick up after you, men, especially your sons and your daughters. They watch how you treat mom to see how men should treat mom and where mom position is at. 
And mom, the way mom treats dad, let the children know what's the position of woman in life and in family. So the children can be blessed after us. So his children are blessed after him. That's what you want. Be fruitful and multiply. Verse 2. He is wise. So it was Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. This verse 2. He is wise and will hear. Are you wise and are, is willing to listen to your, your wife? Not to do what she tell you, but to listen. To consider. Consider, men. That's merciful. He is wise and will hear and will increase learning. And as a man of understanding, stand under. Shall attain unto wise counsels. He walks in the way of good men and keeps the paths of the righteous Therefore he finds favor and good understanding in the sight of God, Ahaya, and man. Verse 5. His children hear his instruction and attend to no understanding. So his children love instruction. They're virtuous and they attend to no understanding. Sure, Dad, what you want to read to us today? Sure, babe, what you got? Let me hear. You know, I love that. His children hear his instruction and attend to no understanding. He avoids the strange woman and rejoices with the wife of his youth. For he keepeth the commandment of his father, the forefathers, our parents, and the Most High, our parents, and forsakes not the law of his mother. Blessed is he, for he heareth me wisdom. He heareth wisdom. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. He receives instruction and becomes yet wiser. Because he is a righteous man, he will receive teaching and increase in learning. Because he is a righteous man, he will receive teaching. He receives it cheerfully and increase in learning as a wise son hey sons younger guys he gathereth in summer his strength enables him to obtain riches he has strength and he's enabled able men and his worthy wife your wife got to be worthy and worthy of respect is a crown to his life wow Dress me up, woman. You are my crown. That means you dress me. You are my crown. You are crown to my life. So for he even shows tender mercies to the life of his beast. He treats even the animals with mercy and love. Treat the animals, good men. Because he tilleth his land, he takes care of the land, of the earth. Of the nature. He's a natural man. He has stored up plenty of bread. Money. Food. All that stuff. Whatever is considered bread. Because he is diligent. He is diligent and has strength to remain diligent. Very diligent. His hand bears rule. He bears rule. Order. Structure. But not really hierarchy, but order and rule and structure. Because he walks, because he walks, because he walks, because he walks with wise men, not fools. Talking about some foolish conversations and things that aren't convenient. Unlearned people serving other gods and all that junk. What I got to do with you? He is wise because he realized that. Straying away from the commandments is death, and keeping the commandments is life. Fools are not his companions, heck no. He is good and leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So he leaves inheritance, a last will and testament for his children and his children's children, just in case it happened to his children. For he had so loved his son that he had chastened him. He corrected his son because he loved his son. So fathers, you got to correct your son. Like the father corrects us. And we're, 
where his his sons and daughters and he's the only father so verse 19 and his ways please ahaya so that the lord maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him are your enemies at peace with you you got to know how to really you know convert the soul my enemies have, I be seeing some of my enemies once in a while, and when I see them, they have a different vibe towards me. Like, oh, I can't believe I got into an argument with him, or I can't believe like me and him don't talk no more. I feel that vibe from them, because they know it ain't like that. And it was just a misunderstanding, but we don't talk to each other. We look at each other, walk past each other. But we're supposed to forgive our enemies. But only the Most High has the power to forgive, so ask the Most High to forgive you. And to be even more righteous, go to them and ask for forgiveness. So, the Lord, the Most High maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Slow to anger, he ruleth his spirit as a victorious commander. He ruleth his spirit as a victorious commander. Slow to anger. His enemies are at peace with him. In old age, his children's children are a crown to him. This is what we look forward to. And the glory of his children are his glory. You listen to that, men? That child is a prize from God to you. A gift through that woman which is a help for you and a gift to you and a comforter while you're here on earth. And the Most High um, gave you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Light which He breathed into your life, which are the Ten Commandments. So you are sovereign, you are a king, you rule many things, man. And women need to respect that. And stop trying to oppress it or suppress it or shut it down or put out our flame because it's not going to stop. The Most High will deal with you with fire and brimstone. This, those who disobey the, the order. So now let's continue. His words are as deep waters, a wellspring of wisdom. Like a flowing brook. That's the type of man you want, women. He knoweth his wife is a good thing because the Lord has favored him to have found her. Because you know God is blessing him because he keeps the commandment, so he's sending him a reward, a help. He knoweth his wife is a good thing because the Most High has favored him to have found her a prudent woman. Because he shows himself friendly, he has friends. She must be friendly too sometimes, guys. Mostly all the time, but not too friendly. Friendly enough so your, your kindness is not taken as weakness. Like, I'm friendly as heck. I'm very open and friendly. Trust that. But if someone mess with me, you know, in my family, and I forgave them many times... And I forgave them and I did my best. Eventually the demon called anger overtakes me. I get mad. And I'll jack people up. If they try to take my weakness. My kindness is weakness. And think that my weakness is kindness. They'll, they'll be mistaken. Because I do have that other side there too. Like all of us. I'm just like all of us. And we all have these things added on to the flesh. But remember we're not this flesh. We've been formed from the dust. And we return to it. Remember part one of this video. So everything's in order. In decent order. You don't even realize it. So verse 24. Because he shows himself friendly. He has friends. For he is a friend. That sticketh closer. Than a brother. So he's a good friend. Diligent in his business. Diligent. Get business done. Get work done. Everybody else, mind your business. He stands before kings and not before mean men. He holds not correction from his child, which means he corrects his child. He disciplines his child righteously and in moderation and also with compassion. 
Because even while God is punishing you, He does it with compassion. I don't want to destroy him all the way. I don't want to make him bleed and break his armor or anything. I want to just correct them and let them know that some things are bad. And not listening and following orders, my son or daughter, is called rebelliousness. You cannot be rebellious. You must be obedient, prudent, and virtuous. You hear that, my son and daughter? You must listen to when daddy speak. He is the captain of this boat. And I'm only doing it for your, for your, um, for your best interest. Trust that. Because the Most High told me to protect you, not to uh, imprison you or to control you or manipulate you. You can go do what you want to do, son or daughter. But trust me, I am going to punish you if you go against my commands. You have free will to do what you like. So are you going to go out the door and come back and get a butt whooping? Or are you going to obey and know that I'm trying to protect you from the fox that's outside the window, outside the house? You go outside, you don't listen, fox eat you up. See, I didn't try to scare you, I didn't try to do nothing, I just gave you an ultimatum. Either you listen to me, or you listen to what's not me. And if you're going to listen to what's not me, you might as well put a ring on him. So let's continue on. <laughs> so because he shows himself friendly he has friends diligent in his business he stands before kings he holds not correction from his child neither is he found among wine bibbers drunkards <laughs> what you doing with these bums nor gluttonous eaters of flesh people love eating meat eating meat after meat smell all like meat Yet he hearkens unto his father that begot him, despising not his mother when she is old. Respect your mother. Even if you're a man, respect the woman. She's still the mother. She's still above you because she's the mother. The father's above you too because he is the father. You must respect him because it's for your own good, my son and daughter. Listen to the voice of the Most High. He who hear it, let him listen. Don't let it go in. And out Let it go in and retain the memory of what you just heard today And the feeling of it But more of what the vision you the, the vision you perceived While you hear the words Of this prophecy Which is future events Now events Things that's going to happen Things that need to happen Things that used to happen And things we're establishing now What is that? The house of faith The house of prayer The house of worship The house of truth And the wind came and beat upon the house. And the tornado came across and it beat upon the house. And even the waves and water beat upon the house. But the house stood because it was built on the rock. But the house that was built on the stand, the tornado and the wind beat upon it. And on the first hit it broke apart because it was built on quicksand. So which you want to build a firm house or a faggotry house? A house of disorder and rebelliousness and lesbians and gays and transsexuals, cross gender and oh men, remain in your order, women. Remain in your order, men. Christ is in his order. The angels are in their order. So is um, the Most High. Even the animals are in their order and they're below us. Even Satan is in order to be Satan. So you people, women, be in order. Rebuke the devil. And men, remain in order. Rebuke the devil. Obey God, men and women. And know that you are created by God. Because man is who image is man made in? God. So what image is the woman made in if the man is made in the image of not himself? God. So women are in the image of God. Which is man. Man is God. Watch yourself. Because when you go to heaven, you're going to have to deal with the most high, high's loud voice. You're going to have to deal with the loud singing and chanting of the angels up there in heaven if that's where you want to go. If that's where your soul went to rest and reside for eternity with the golden streets and golden gate blocked by cherubims and election only, which means VIP only. Only the elected and remnant are allowed. They're the only ones listening to this video today. You with me. So let's continue on. So his hand bears rule. Because he walks with wise men, he is wise. Fools are not his companions. So let's continue on. 
So verse 24, because he shows himself friendly, he has friends, for he is a friend that sticketh closer than a, closer than a brother. All right, let's continue on. So we read about gluttonous eaters of flesh. Yet he hearkened his, okay, carrying on. So in verse 29, as iron sharpeneth iron to make swords, so he sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Keeps everyone in tune, sharp. So even in the friendship there's order. Because he hideth not his eyes from the poor, he does he he does not lack. Because he's always giving to the poor. When the poor have, even they give to him, because the rich already give. Some of them do. Even though the rich don't give. Because he's one of the rich that gives. He does not lack. Not because he give to receive. But because he has so much to give and he does not hide his eyes from the poor and he keeps receiving blessing upon blessing, he does not lack. Plus the poor people want to try to give him things. Oh, thank you very much. I'm fulfilled. I got everything. You know, I got the million bucks, thousand dollars. I got the cars, everything, you know. I got the donation place. I got the school open up, the new hospital. Thank you, everyone. I, I just want to give back to you now. You know, here's a million bucks. Here, go feed your family, everyone. I have enough, you know. And he gives. He doesn't turn his eye up like, well, I have all this and I'm going to keep it to myself and make the school just to benefit my own agenda and, 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 and make dirt doctors serve my own agenda and the military and army serve my own agenda and even make my women submit to my own agenda, which is not biblical and, and all this stuff. No, you can't do that. That's wicked and evil. You'll be cursed and you will be sent a Jezebel spirit demon to persecute you. And probably annihilate you and destroy you and probably make you want to put a 9 caliber gun into your head, loaded up and... And you go straight to hell still. Because suicide is automatic hell. Death. How can you ever rest? You're thinking about your killer, like, dang, how I got here? Oh, I forgot, I killed myself. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> no, I don't want to remember that I killed myself, but dang, I'm dead I, because I killed myself. That's you being hell, man. Don't do it. Come to the, the, the holy book and eat your daily bread and receive your daily water, which you thirst and hunger for. Your spirit's thirsty for this truth. It's thirsty for this truth. Feel it. It's thirsty for this truth. It's hungry for the word of God. Not for the word of man. And I'm always bringing all the attention to God. Not trying to make people just prosper. You know with God. Using God to gain money and false blessings. God you're supposed to let God use you. So you can fulfill God's will. Not to fill up your house. And, and store up your own treasure. We've went the wrong way. Even the marriages man. May there be order in the house. So now, let's continue on. So because he, his eyes, he doesn't hide his eyes from the poor, he does not lack. As a husband, he is known in the gates where he sitteth among the elders of the land. The elders, the other saints with you. So in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, let's fellowship, let's um, unite, me and you, everyone, let's join you know, let's start something together. We got the scriptures. We got everything. Let's do something. Contact me at um, at my email at um, God lives in our heart. God lives in our heart because we have one heart. God lives in our heart at hotmail.com. And you can also Skype me. Download Skype immediately. We can talk in group conversations there, individual conversations there where I can help and assist you through these scriptures and how to be prudent. Because the Most High is dealing with me. He chose me to, to choose you guys, to be chosen ones as well, to choose people as well that will continue the legacy of the truth. So visit me at Skype, Archangel, Mac, Archangel Macintosh. So A-R-C-H-A-N-G-E-L point m a k i n t o c h holla at me man let's get this on the road we need to fellowship unite and work together man we the elders we know the law man don't treat me like i don't know the law we know the law let's unite so all right let's continue on 
So in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's clothing, woman's garment. No women ain't supposed to be wearing pants. They're supposed to be wearing skirts and dresses, mainly dresses, in moderation. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God, looking like a whore, looking like a hooker, walking outside looking foolish. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13, like this is a man's garment, according to the priest's um, description of the priest's robe, priest's garment, like the Levites. That's not a woman's garment. A woman's garment will be a dress. So Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13, when it becomes an umbrella at the bottom. A foolish son is ruined to his father. It's 2, 3, 4 p.m. Halalahaya ba'asham yeshaya waharawak kwadash. Halalahaya. So a foolish son, a foolish son is ruined to his father. So is a foolish daughter. And a wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain, crying after crying in sorrow. She's just going to get shut down, put down. Shut up. Shut up. Sit down. Quarreling. Continual dripping of rain. And a foolish son is a ruin to his father. So I mean a, a husband, a foolish husband is a ruin to his father as well. As well as a daughter or a wife that's quarrelsome. You daughters need to stay in your place as well. To respect your fathers. And to respect your brothers, by the way. And to respect your mothers. So there's a lot more burden put on the woman than there is the man, as you can tell. Because of the position of the woman. That's why the man, the firstborn of the son, becomes the head of the family. The chosen one. The woman is, is, is life giver. She gives life. She's a meat. She's a helper for man, to help man, to restore true righteous balance with righteous time. So in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9, It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19, It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Excellent. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. An excellent wife who can find. Where's an excellent wife? There should be an excellent wife. Yes, the most high create them. Let's find them. I want some of those berries from the, from the field. She is far from more. She is far more precious than jewels. She's far more precious than all the other crap around you. She's worthy to be taken as wife flesh of flesh bone of bone marry me faithful and trustworthy in the first book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 11 even so must their wives be grave not slanderers sober faithful in all things they are faithful they have to be gracious and honorable Proverbs chapter 11 verse 16 a gracious woman gets honor and violent man gets riches. So the violent man, the thief gets riches because he's violent, he's forceful, and he robs. So he gets stuff that way. But a gracious woman gets honor because she's gracious. She has grace. She forgives forgive her husband as well. Now she must be helpful. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and section 22 through 24. Chapter 2 verse 18. In verse 22 through 24. Then the Most High Yahweh God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Remember that? Reminisce. I will make him a helper fit for him. And the rib that the Lord God Ahaya had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last, at last, she is last, is bone of bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Adam gave you your name, woman. Because she was taken out of man. Therefore man shall leave his father and his mother. And hold fast to his wife. And, and they shall come, become one flesh.
All right, before we continue on, I want to go ahead and show you this right here. This is a video. Let me see. All right, check this cock diesel masculine dude out. He's a little bit feminine because he was born with his mom and dad. But what he says is so true, especially about black women. Now, these are the... So, listen right here. We're going to be also reading... Um, Hold on, let me see. All right, we're going to be reading some things about women again later on. So, traits of a righteous woman. In the first book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 12. But I suffer not, I do not tolerate a woman to teach. Nor to usurp authority over the man. He does not tolerate it once, not one bit. But to be in silence, just shut up, trust me girl. Just please. I don't know how else to say it in a way you'll get how much you need to shut the up. In the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is Ahaya. So let's watch this real quick. Oh, pardon me. They got a lot of people you call effeminate, which is Ahab's, effeminate. They're very feminine. Stop being feminine, guys. Unless you want to go ahead and go polish your nails too and stuff and, and, and paint your eyelashes and eyebrows and all this junk women do and go buy a weaving extension and be a little bee. If you want to be feminine, you effeminate. And you women trying to be tomboys and act like it's cool. That's out of order. A woman's a woman, a man is a man. This is what the Most High created, man. Thus say the Lord, remember, we all should be in one accord with that. Other than that, you're using your own belief, your own feeling, and your own opinion. It's cast down. It's rebuked, it's rejected, and it's not heard. You're ignored. Because the Bible is the word. Ain't nobody going to listen to someone who don't obey the Bible. You crazy? I don't want to go to hell. Why would I ever listen to you? I'm going to stay true to the word of the Most High in a respectful way as I can. As I um, learn about the word more and more and find to myself more and more to him because I'm far from where I need to be. And I want to be there. And I'm not going to let no woman bring me down or seduce me out of, my, out of the true doctrines that is edible. Remember, let's continue. YouTube world and family and friends. Today I want to talk about, again, about uh, the black community and some of the problems that we face. Over the past 20, maybe 30 years, black America has gone through a metamorphosis and it's changed drastically. We have a lot of problems in our community from drugs, alcohol, the public school system has gone straight to hell. And it's affecting the children because the woman's supposed to be taking care of the children. And the men's supposed to be taking care of the woman and children, the family. And the men ain't there. They got kids who are bastards and women who are widows now, according to the Bible, you know what I'm saying, without a father. They don't know how to be balanced, how to be right. They don't know how to, how to, how to respect men or how to respect women because they, they weren't raised with one or the other sex or both. Some people ain't got no parents. They were adopted and went through you know, foster homes and going through family and family not knowing who they are, why, where they came from, why they're here, who the heck made them. Who rung the bell? They don't know what. Because of no order in the house. So let there be order in the house. Now, there are serious issues we face within the black community. Ultimately, we need, we, we need to begin to take a close look at how we got here. And I'm beginning to see that the biggest problem we have in black America, to black America today, biggest issue are black women. I know it sounds rather harsh, but we got to be serious about this now. Too many black American women are having 
children without getting married, without a husband, having kids, bringing these bastard children into the world, and it's creating some serious, serious problems within the black community. And no one's willing to discuss it. No one wants to say anything about it or uh, demand that these women stop having these children that they can offer nothing to. Too many black women in America today think it's okay to get pregnant by some worthless man. Too many black women today think it's okay to get to have children by more than one man, four and five husbands, five, four or five men, rather or four or five baby daddies. This problem is, has created some very, very serious issues in our community. And I think another problem with black women, they're not married, they're raising these kids in homes where they have to work as a single parent, and they're trying to raise a family without a husband, one income, a job. I can do it on my own. The kids are raising themselves and we've got some serious problems. Serious problems. And in all honesty, I think that black women need to really take a chill with your kids for right now. They don't need to have no more kids. Especially if they're not married, do not have a career of some sort, whether it's a college education or a decent job to support these children. But for a black woman to get married, to, to have give birth to a child to a child and not have the proper things in place to support that child, we got a problem. I mean, we we cannot we cannot ignore this problem any longer. We have got to reach out into the community and begin talking to these women and saying you cannot continue to go down this path and have children and not be married, not be able to offer these children anything not be able to do anything for these children, not even have, some of these women don't even have homes for these children. And that's just one of the problems with black women in our community, having these kids without a father. But trying to raise a family, black women got some serious issues. They got a lot of hate and anger in their hearts towards men, and they take it out on these kids. And they, they're educating these kids to not like black men. That's not a good idea. And that might be why the murder rate among African-American men towards each other how we kill each other. We're not taught love because we have a mother or a mom who has a lot of anger towards black men and that kind of rubs off on these kids growing up in these households. I, ain't, I don't have a daddy. I don't know my father. Fuck them niggas. I don't know these niggas. I don't give a damn about a nigga. Ain't no nigga took care of me. Heard that many, many times from lots of young black men. I guess I was lucky because I grew up in a household with my mother and father. And I was able to see a fa my father go to work and come home and do stuff for us and be there for uh, the family. A lot of blacks are not growing up in those types of households. And they're angry about it. They're pissed. They're mad. And you know what? And I completely understand it. But they're mad at the wrong person. Unfortunately, the person they need to be mad at is their mother because she set them up for failure. She set her kids up by, to, for failure by having children that you cannot support without being married, without a proper career or job or income to support a family, but you got four, five children. Oh, man. Are you working at 7-Eleven? Are you going to school trying to get an education? Black women have single-handedly destroyed black America. They are the problem. And I love my sisters. I love black women. But they need to slow, they need to slow their road down and stop this foolishness. They got to stop it. It makes no sense for a woman to go out and get pregnant and have a child and they have nothing to offer this child. That's true. Nothing. They're not married. They can't support the child. They can't take care of it. They don't even like their men. They feed and clothe the child. Is that fair to that child? On welfare. Why do you think these guys are running out here shooting and killing everybody? They don't care because they feel no one cared about them. Exactly. Talk to these kids. Kids well, without I order. Kids. I talk to these folks all the time. I live right down the street from a very rough Spawns of Satan. And I go down there and talk to those guys. They're young. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm like, where's your mom? Where's your dad? My mom at work. She always at work. Where's your dad? I, I don't know. I ain't never met my father. I don't even know. Fuck that nigga. I don't even know who he is. 
they have every right to be angry and upset because they feel as if nobody cares about them. Nobody cares. Nobody's there for them. Nobody. And God really, left them because really, really they left the Bible. That black women continue to do this. There's nothing wrong with having children when you're married, have an income, have a husband to help you raise those kids, the right support from family, friends. But to struggle by it, and then this independent black, I'm an independent black woman, I can do what I want to do, I don't need nobody. So my sisters did that. My sisters were so independent, they didn't need nobody help with those kids. They were, if you all could only see that nightmare that came out of that today. They didn't want any help from anybody. Dang, done, killers. Of course, their husbands they got rid of Programmed. Them. The kids are all monsters today. Monsters. And I hate to say this, but they are really, really bad kids. And they're, and they're grown now. Not doing anything with their lives. Besides going back and forth to jail, being high on drugs, staying in the streets all day and night, and having children. Them boys got a lot of kids. Because I'm going to go over there, I say, well, where are all these kids come from? Oh, that's so-and-so's child. And then... So and so's child and adultery. Had two kids and that's his fornication. Baby and that's his I'm like, what? why are these women having all these kids? Is anybody married? Nobody's married. Does anybody have a job to take that's care of these serious. kids? That's serious. Nobody has a job, but we all got three and four kids. And y'all not married. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't understand. Why would somebody, why would any woman? want to put themselves in a position to have to take care of children. You're not married, so that man can walk away the time he wants. Even if he was married, he still can walk away. But he ain't working, so you're not going to get no child support. These women have got to stop this foolishness. Black women have single-handedly destroyed black America, and it's been going on for about 30 years now. Having these children and you always say, oh yeah, but it takes two. A man can, a woman can have, get pregnant by herself. No, but a woman can protect herself. She has the one that, that's going to suffer the most damage, and she's the one doing the most damage to the community. She's going to raise those kids with all that anger and upset within her heart because she's mad because this man left her with these children. These men left her with these children. They're upset. They're angry. They take it out on these kids. And of course, these kids are suffering, don't have shoes, don't have clothes. It's terrible. And I know I cannot be the only person seeing this poverty and despair in our community. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. We got to stop the foolishness. Black women have got to stop this. Black women have got to stop having these children without anything to offer them. Black women have single-handedly destroyed black America and they continue to do it today. Black women are the problem. Black women having these children are a serious issue that's doing major damage that nationwide, and it needs to stop. I know that some people are probably going to get upset by this. Because some people say they don't like my delivery. They don't like these topics. We've got to take a serious look at Black America and begin trying to figure out these problems, trying to understand how we got where we are today, and can it be fixed? Nothing wrong with having children when you're ready to have kids, when you're married. The world is changing. What a woman did in 1970, she can't do today in 2013. It's much more difficult and much more harder for her. And it's difficult for me. I'm, I'm having a difficult time myself as a single black man. I can imagine having three or four kids over here. So I'm going to continue on and stuff. So it says right here in um, James chapter 1 verse 23 or verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word. Actually, matter of fact, let's start reading it. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that one. So... Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, 
and do and and not a doer of the word he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass you see his true colors for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein the Ten Commandments, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So if any man among you seem to be religious, and brittled not his tongue, doesn't hold his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, deceiveth his own heart, he's believing or she's believing that she's doing something. This man's religion is vain. That means that person's belief is vain because they're deceiving their own heart and they don't brittle their own mouth. So pure religion and undefiled before the Most High and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And I love what it says right here in chapter 2 of James, verse 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Christ Yeshua, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto you assembly a man with a gold ring in his, his goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not a higher chosen the poor of his of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he had promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat, the court? Do not dumb blaspheme that worthy name by that which ye are called judges. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Flesh of flesh, blood of blood, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. All government too. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, Ten Commandments, and all the commandments in this book, like this command, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So first, whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, and also do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy. That hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doeth profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? What do it profit, my brethren? What does it profit a man to say he has faith? And has no works to prove it. Which is keeping the commandments. Can Because we're working on keeping the commandments. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. And one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye war warmed and filled. Notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. 
She said, depart in peace. Be ye warm. Feel warm and feel. Feel all warm inside. Feel good. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. And I'm going to let you leave in peace. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding though. Ye give them not those things. You did not give them those things. Which are needful. When your man do the conversation. To the body. Which, is, which are needful to the body. What do it profit? Even so. Faith. If it hath not works, it is dead, being alone. So we'll leave that there for now. Now if we go right here to... And make sure this is it. Hold on one second, everybody. Okay, I love this right here. This is in um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse... Nine, chapter four, verse nine. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, Ahia, for he that is entered into his rest, he also hath seized from his own works, as God Ahia did from his, as Ahia did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest where Christ is at. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God, Ahia, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, double-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yeshua, the son of Ahiah, let us hold fast our profession. And that's what we're here to do. His the word of God, Ahiah, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to, to the dividing asunder, asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's deep. Simmer in that real quick. All right, let me go ahead and continue then. So if you read right here in the book of Thessalonians. All right, verse 2, chapter 2 of the Thessalonians. Now we beseech you, verse 1. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Christ Yeshua, Justos, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit. These words aren't grievous, it's for your own benefit no, and your own strength. Nor by word, do not be troubled, nor by word, nor by letter as from us. As that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of destruction. Perdition. Obama. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called good. God. 
or that is worship because he's antichrist. He's anti against these laws. That's why everything's um damaged. He's Satan, so that he as a higher sitteth trying to be as God sitteth in the temple of Yah, showing himself that he is Yah. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Now look, verse seven. For the mystery of iniquity do already work. There's a mystery to iniquity. It's a mystery of sin. And it works too. It's on the clock. For the mystery of sin do already work. Sin's working in our flesh now. We need to cast it out. In the name of Christ. Amen. Only he who now let it will let. Until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth. The Ten Commandments. That they might be saved. By the Ten Commandments. And the grace of Christ. And for this cause. Ahaya shall send them. Strong delusion. Keep worshiping Zeus. Keep doing what you're doing. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. Who believed not the truth. But had pleasure. In unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Ahaya for you, brethren, beloved, of the Lord Ahaya, Bahasham Yeshua. Because God Ahaya hath, hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So they, in verse 12, so those who believe a lie will be damned. And those who had pleasure in unrighteousness will all be damned. And those who did not want to believe in truth, the Most High is going to send them a delusion with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them because they're perishing. And His light's going to destroy them and it's the spirit of His mouth. So we must keep these words, men. And be men. So before we continue on, there's... um. Something I want. I want to start going into the children's stuff now. Before we do that, let's watch one more thing about women. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to QLAN Inc. and our uh, live class. We are gearing up for I Am Virtuous, our five-day intensive that's going to happen on uh, July 9th through 13th. And I'm uh, actually doing this class as a pre-registration class uh, just to give you more information about uh, the class that's coming up, the five-day intensive, but also to share some information with you uh, that as I was preparing for the intensive, uh, God gave me uh, some some distinctive uh, characteristics of a virtuous woman as well as a um, a woman, a foolish woman. And so uh, I'm going to actually talk to you about those characteristics, and there are 10. Uh, but I want to make sure that you have a few things before we get started in class tonight. Make sure that you have an ink pen. Make sure you have a, a piece of paper or a notepad. And also make sure that you have your Bible because we will turn to uh, a few scriptures or, shall I say, I may uh, quote a lot of scriptures and may have you turn to a couple of scriptures tonight. Um, um, I did introduce myself. I am Jacqueline Williams and I am CEO of QLIN Inc. And I am facilitator of the QLIN International Institute for Women. And I want to invite you to become a part of the Institute. It is totally free, uh, tuition free. All you have to do is log on to QLINincorporated.com. And as you log on to QLINincorporated.com, you will see a tab on the top navigation bar that says Institute. And so when you log in, uh, when you see that, all you have to do is click the Enroll. Uh, enroll now in, 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 and put your information in. And once you do that, then uh, you will receive some more information on how you can become an actual uh, student, cyber coaching student of the QLIN International Institute for Women. So with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pray 
And again, tonight I'm sharing um, the blessing of a virtuous woman versus the curse of a foolish woman because there is a totally distinctive difference between the two. And so tonight I want you to really uh, look into your heart, be honest and open about who you really are so that you can either co go, you can go from if you are foolish, you know, to being uh, a woman of virtue. Uh, so uh, really quickly, I want to say hello to the to the ladies that's in the chat room. Hello, uh, naturally, the Ron. Let's fast also, forward in a little. Uh, together right now to learn the blessing of a virtuous woman versus the curse of a foolish woman. I pray, Lord God, for every person that's listening to this message that you will speak to their hearts and not only um, that the word will, will penetrate their hearts, but also that the word will go forth and produce fruit that remains. I also pray, Lord God, that uh, as we are learning and seeking how to be the virtuous woman that you desire us to be, uh, that you will Can give us the grace to do right? so. Uh, and that you will also give us, you know, witty inventions and creative ideas uh, for our home and, 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 and being the women that, again, you have called and designed us to be. Now, Father, I cover every person that's watching this, whether it's live or whether they're watching a playback recording. I cover every person under the blood of Jesus. And I decree and I declare that shot. nothing can penetrate the blood of Jesus. The that blood we're of your shot. That we're loved, that we are... Uh, that we're covered like we've never been covered before. Lord, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. In Yeshua's name, name. Amen. amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get right into it. Um, Everyone's learning. Your Bibles, Christians trick Proverbs many people. Chapter, um, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. We're going to listen. Uh, I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. And it says, a wise woman builds her house. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. I'm going to read that one more time. A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. So we're talking tonight about the difference in a wise or, or what I like to call virtuous woman uh, and the foolish woman. Because there's a totally complete difference. And uh, as I go through these ten um, comparisons tonight... Again, search your heart and be honest and be open. And uh, if you have been, you know, operating on the foolish side, it's okay. You can turn over to the virtuous side, okay? Uh, so what I want to do really quickly is make sure that you do this. You write down Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 through 31. That's the scripture that I want you to start reading and meditating on. Uh, most of us, we know it. Most, many people can, can pretty much... Uh, you know, quote those verses verbatim, word for word. Uh, but I also just believe that it is so important that even if you know the scripture, that you, it's still important for you to read it and you to meditate on it. So I want to encourage you to read that and meditate on that within the next week because when we begin our uh, I Am Virtuous classes, then we're going to go back to... See, a woman like that, it's very easy to listen to her and respect her. That's what men go for. Scripture. The spirit, the personality is valuable, is very rare. And there's some people, some women that are even more virtuous too. It gets very virtuous. So it's a race to be virtuous women, to submit yourself to your mind. Um, but here's the question What is a blessing? What is a blessing? I looked up some definitions of blessing and I found a great definition on Wikipedia and it defines blessings as the infusion of something with holiness or spiritual redemption or divine Barakata. will or one's hope or approval. I love the fact that it says the infusion of something with holiness. When you want God to bless your life, what you're doing is you're infusing your life with his holiness, with who he is and um, not just who he is but all the benefits that he has for us. The Bible says that God daily loads us with benefits. So when you are operating in the blessing, then that's what your life is, is your life results in. The infusion of every single area of your life, spirit, soul, body, relationships, finances, and even professionally, as well as your environment, it will be infused with his holiness. And in that, that that's where the blessing is. Um, so now the next question is, well, what is a curse? Uh, a curse is something 
or uh, actually something, uh, and sometimes it can be someone uh, that brings uh, great trouble or even harm to a person. And so uh, tonight as we are looking at the comparison of the two, remember that a blessed woman is a woman who is infused with holiness, but then the foolish woman is a woman who brings harm and even destruction and trouble to people. So let's get into it, okay? Um, number one, a virtuous woman, she makes God her priority, but the foolish woman makes man her priority, makes man her priority. And by man, what I mean is she puts everybody before God. Everybody's opinion matter before God's opinion matter. Uh, everybody's uh, situations matter before the things of God matter. And that's not the way that we should be as women. Uh, we should always, married or single, we should always, you know, make God a priority. And even if you're married, making God a priority is also serving your husband and being a blessing to your family. So make sure that uh, as you are seeking uh, the virtuous life, living the virtuous life, that you begin to make God a priority. Well, how do you make God a priority? Number one is you... Um, Acknowledge God. You know, you acknowledge who he is in your life. Uh, is he your Lord? And if so, Lord means master. So if he's the master of your life, then allow him to be there. Um, the next thing, the next way is spend time with God. You have to spend time with him. You have to really begin to uh, develop that relationship with him. And so as you're developing that relationship with him, then you are going to make him a priority. Uh, every time I always compare it to uh, just relationships in general, you know, when you first meet someone, they're not quite a priority just yet. But the more you get to know them, the more you learn who they are and um, develop a friendship, then they become higher up on your list of priorities. So in order for you to, to have that, you know, to make God a priority, you also have to have a relationship with him as well. Okay? The second... Well, before I do that, I want you to say that. Say, I make God a priority. I make God a priority. I am a virtuous woman. A higher virtuous say that woman. One more time. I make God a priority. I make a higher I am priority. A virtuous woman. A higher a okay. virtuous man. Uh, the second comparison is this, and that is a virtuous woman builds her house. We just read this I'm in a Proverbs virtuous chapter man. 14, verse 1. A virtuous woman builds her house. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. So, in other words, what, what does build mean? Build means to establish something, to increase, or even to strengthen something. So, a virtuous woman is always increasing her household. She's always establishing her household. She's always constructing. She's always uh, adding to um, her house, her home. Uh, whether it is financially, whether it is emotionally, whether it is, um, you know, adding to, uh, you know, the, their, their bellies, making sure that her family is fed, whatever it is, she's always adding to her home. And, uh, of course, the opposite of that is the foolish woman is always taking away. She doesn't make her family and the things in her home a priority. She actually sometimes despises her home and despises even being home whereas a virtuous woman loves being home loves being around her family loves being around the people that uh, she loves now if you want to keep checking out this video i love this video i had to watch this 49 minutes but it's called the blessing of a virtuous woman versus the curse of a foolish woman so that's all we have for that right there that one we're going to be seeing last so now we're going to start going into the children but look it First of all, in Leviticus chapter 21, verse 9, King James Bible, And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. Because he's supposed to be giving her the son. And it's like son, the devil ruining Eve before giving it to Adam. That's, you know, like what the heck? You already slept with her? That's what happened with Lilith. She shall be burnt with fire. That's what happened to Lilith. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 29 Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness Nahum chapter 3 verse 4 Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot the mistress the mistress 
the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord, the Most High of hosts. And I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, like in porn and all that stuff, and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and make thee vile, and will set thee as a gazing stock. So in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 21, Then they shall bring out the damsel, the stallion, that woman, to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Yesharal to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. So now right here, um, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. So this is what the Most High thinks about some of these women. But look it, this is what the children are absorbing in today's society. And I want to end it on this before we continue on in our next part. So this is crazy right here. Wait, before we go to that one, let me... Go to this one right here. Oh. Pardon me. Oh no, where it went? Okay. All right, so we gotta wait for it for a little. All right, let me go ahead and start reading it anyway. I hope it pauses. Yeah, I got to wait for it to pop up. All right, so go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, the Most High, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth and ye fathers and mothers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture of the commandments in the word and admonition and admonition and admonition of the most high through Christ servants be obedient to them that are your masters According to the flesh, though. With fear and trembling in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God, Ahaya, from the heart, with good will doing service, as to the Most High, as if it's to the Most High, and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, Ahia, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening. Stop threatening them. Knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So now, if we read right here, hold on, let me see. So look at right here. This is in um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 or 18 verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, Rawak, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time to pass, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is this, love for the commandments, joy for the commandments, peace because of the commandments, long-suffering, long to keep the commandments and keeping the commandments, gentleness, keeping the commandments, goodness, keeping the commandments, faith, through keeping the commandments, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law against that command. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Claiming you have faith without works is dead faith, dead works. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So in verse 7 of chapter 6 of, well actually um, chapter 6 of Galatians. So brethren, if a man be, verse 1, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. With the law. So that's what we're here to do. To bring people back to the order of the law. That's the whole point why we're preaching this to people. So verse 16 of chapter 6 of Ephesians. And as many as walk according to this rule. Peace be unto them. And mercy. And upon the Yesharal of Ahaya. So peace be unto you people who keep these laws. So right here. In um, Ephesians chapter, hold on one second. All right, so Ephesians chapter four, verse seventeen. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, Yeshaya. That ye, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. You hear that, Adam and Eve? In the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Ahia, through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all in cleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Christ. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after Ahaya is created, after God is created, I am that I am, in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. But ye angry. Be ye angry. And sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor. Working with his hands. The thing which is good. That he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication. Proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. Rawat Kodash of Ahaya. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We are sealed. So do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from, from you. With all malice you hear this man put down your guns. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as Ahiah for Yeshaya Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So forgive as you've been forgiven. So chapter 5 of Ephesians. Be ye therefore followers of Ahia as children. And walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us. And hath given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to Ahia for a sweet smelling savour. But fornication. Sex without marriage. Sex out of marriage. And all uncleanness. Or covetousness. 
Let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints neither filthiness nor foolish, 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 foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of Ahia. Let no man deceive you with, with vain words. For because of these things that he listed, cometh the wrath of Ahia upon the children of disobedience. Be, ye, be not ye partake, therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Christ, Yeshua, the truth. Walk as children of truth, children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable. It proves what is acceptable unto the Most High. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever do make manifest is light. And that's true. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, awake, awake, and arise, quorum from the dead, and Christ Yeshua the truth shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil men. Wherefore be ye not unwise men, but understanding what the will of the Most High is, men and women. And be, not, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Most High, giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High, and the Father and the Son, Christ yourself, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Most High. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, men, but that it should be holy, kwadash, and without blemish. So ought men, men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Most High cherish it and nourishes the church. Yeshuro. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. See, we're going to start getting into marriage, you see. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. How babies get here. But I speak concerning Christ and the church being married. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now we go right here to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. A lot of people know this. And look at they're, they're polluting your children's mind with this this. Cartoon and stuff. Every cartoon, television's bad. Turn it off. Put this book in front of your children or something. Or put holy stuff around them. Um, um, put only. Don't even put on anything on television that seem holy and Christian like. Or because they're all they're all um impersonators, false prophets. They're all forging um the Bible. Trust me, every single one of them. They're all liars, deceivers, Satan. You can't find no remedy through television. Never. Trust my word. I have not lied to you or failed you yet. Trust me still. So at verse 10, chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Most High. You women too, be strong in the word and in the power of the word's might. Put on the whole armor of good that ye may be able to stand against the wills of the bad. 
of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle against principalities, principles, order, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, ill light, illuminati, against spiritual wickedness in high places in government. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of good, the word of Ahaya, I am that I am, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Loins girt about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, whole armor of God of Ahaya. And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which is this, the truth, the commandments. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. That's the sword. So, if you go right here, verse 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I hire an ambassador in bonds, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye may also know my affairs and how I do. So, verse 22. Whom I have... So, right, wait, pardon me. So, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Most High, Christ Yeshua, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts with the gospel of peace. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from Ahaya the Father, Abba Ahaya, and the Lord, Christ Yeshua, Hamashiach, Rahamalak. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Christ Yeshua in sincerity. Amen. Now check this out. This is what they're doing to the children now through the television. Because we're going to start going into the children. Well, after we get into marriage, we get into the children, but we will see this first. Look at how it make how it make your body feel. Look at the asterisk star in the back, Jezebel. Sandy, I saw it. It's big, scary, and pink. Oh no.
All right, let's continue on. So the Most High says right here, these people are crazy. They really are. So chapter, um, let me see, in the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, Sasha fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God, Ahia, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now you get it? So now you go over here to um, the first book of Timothy, chapter... Chapter 1, verse 4. First book of Timothy. Neither give heed to fables and endless, endless genealogies which minister questions. Because they rise up questions. You know that they're not Hebrew. We are. Rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the, the commandment is charity. Out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which some have um, swerved, have turned aside into vain jangling. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. Amen. But we know that the law is good, if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, Ahia, which was committed to my trust, these words, and I thank Christ Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, who hath enabled me for me. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Yeshaya was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Yeshaya. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. That Christ Yeshua came into the world to save sinners, of whom a higher chief. How be it for this cause I obtain a mercy that in me first Yeshua might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting, because they're going to follow him. The pattern. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, a higher. Be honor and glory forever. Amen. Forever and ever. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. Timothy. According to the prophecies which went before on thee. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Holding faith and a good conscience. Which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hamanias and Alexander. Whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So, all right. So now we're going to continue on. Um, let me see.
All right, we'll come to this one a little bit later then. I really like this, so I'm going to save this. Because obviously we're going to need a next part. On the next part, I want to um, um, start off with the message to... Well, we can't do the children yet. We got to do marriage. We got to start with marriage. Then we're going to get into the um, whore and then the children. Because the whore is the problem and we need to be righteous and raise our children right. So after we talk about the whore, the prostitute, we'll be able to talk about the children now. How we're righteously supposed to raise children now that I prove to you why a woman must be blameless. And a man must be pure and unblemished. You see, and he must make Christ his crown, which is the book is what he come to. And they're putting all these bad things in your kid's mind. That's why they won't listen to you. They're rebellious. Because you were rebellious and let them go serve these other gods with Google eyes, hypnotizing them, putting them under sorcery of a sea of Lilith and Bridget, the night destroyer owl. But look at this, what they're putting in your kid's mind. Nice to watch this crap. Love this if stuff. I'm very glad you asked me that, Ash, because I think there's a way you can help me. Uh, what kind of help do you have in mind? To drop down to hell. Inferior human organs. Bald by Squeedly Spooch. And this is comedy to the fools. And he looks down. So this is what you do all day. It's true. <laughs> After a lot of punching, we have to And look how it makes your body feel. To learn our manly secrets. Extremely good. Denied. Sorcery. Look at the hat. Okay. Asterisk right. tree. That's okay with me. And an arrow going up. Think it would be too hard to train me. Maybe you're not man enough to try. And that's what they use to make make guys angry. See, that's what people think man is being mad. Make your kids be angry. Porno sex. Turn the TV off. Which is Christ. Uh, Adultery. Honey, I don't think that's gonna fit. Just a little more, dear. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> See, hon? I told you I could do it. Oh, he really thinks I'm a girl and he thinks he loves me. You'll just have to tell him the truth, won't you, beautiful? I can't do that. He'll be heartbroken. Besides, he might tell everyone about the dress and I'll lose my powers. But maybe if I keep up the act, then in a few years Darwin will move on and meet another girl. And if he doesn't, I want more kids. Thanks, Blaine. Call me Dad. But don't get excited. It's simply an acronym for derivation of applied DNA. And you can call me Pinky. It's an acronym for pa e n k e. Narf. Glarb. Brain, promise me we'll have another someday. Pinky, please. We must.
must get back to the lab. The night is young. There's still time. To do what, Brain? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Oh, not tonight, Brain. I have a headache. Hey, wait a minute. Heck, isn't it supposed to be... Sensors. 662-663-664-665. Look, I don't care how much fun you think you're having. You were supposed to degum the park today, and now I find you hold up in here twiddling some sticks. Ah, uh, don't say it like that. We did it. Yeah. See? Having a goal totally focused us. I get it now. Work hard and then play hard. And we're going to be playing hard all night. Ah, uh, don't say it like that. Ooh, a giant pants dispenser. Want one? Please. Stop playing with my bust! Get out of it. This place will be a piece of... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! Oh no! My most private... That's why a lot of us been damaged growing up. Got a lot of repairing to do. Should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sorry. I'm Why they gotta make a movie about that? Irwin's mom is like they're sneaking it in. Nobody can tell you who to fall in love with. Look at that. But we've managed to make it work all these years, leaving a whole lot of questions that don't need to be answered. Uh, <laughs> making you dumb. Me? Ditto. me too. That's the devil. Yeah, but how did you and Irwin's mom? Eh? Leaving a whole lot of questions that don't need to be answered. And now witness where you're headed, Rocco. Look! Into the nipples of the future! Thanks, big man. We've all been touched by your bigness. That's it! We should become ants? No. We need to find a third best friend. Three best friends? Mm hmm Won't that be a bit weird? It's only weird if we make it weird. Do you find it weird? Not if you don't. <laughs> Okay. I feel so certain that I'm just fine, but I'd be a lot better if you'd agree to meet me later for an ever so private swim. Excuse me? Perhaps around 8.30 when Arnie's asleep. What's going on, Dipper? <gasps> ah, you're at that creepy age where you spy on girls, huh? Guess it's time you and me had a man-to-man -man talk about the birds and the bees, you know? I, I should really be going... No way out of it. Look, it all begins with this little fella, the pituitary gland. Uh, uh, the third eye. He has big plans. Muslim hat. <laughs> big plans. You know Islam. Come from. Goodbye, childhood. They showed him porn. Oh, Dexter, <laughs> sweetie. Y yeah? Uh, would you hand me that light bulb there on the table? Look at her trying to make your, your thing go up. Here you go, ma. Bling. Thank you, sweetie. You'll know why you feel it. Don't mention it. Oh, did you find... So we're going to leave it there, but your children's mind are being defiled completely. Completely. And you guys need to get away from um, those churches. So, in the next part, um, we're going to get into the children real quick. There's some cool things I want to show you about them. All right, everyone. Ahaya Barakanta by Shem Yeshaya. All praise to the Most High. Hope y'all learned something today, man. It was edifying. Shalom.